Hey everybody, welcome back to another Creative tutorial. Today we're going to talk about a new perspective option in Creative 5. And it's very easy, so this will be a very short video. So first we're going to go to our assistant tool here. The icon looks like this. Now my toolbar is expanded a little bit, so your toolbar might look a little bit different, but it will always be in the same row as the uh, reference pin and the measure tool. So when you have the assistant tool activated, make sure to go to your tool options. If you don't have the tool options available, go to settings, dockers, and go to, down to tool options. If it's checked in already, it's probably hidden in one of these tabs here. So just go look for that and you can open that up. So the two point perspective is at the very top. It's brand new and it's, like I said, very simple. You can change the color like you can do with everything else. So if I want this to be a bright pinkish purple, I can do that. If you want to change the opacity on it, you can do that. And then if you want to delete the perspective or the assistant tools that you've made, you can delete that, save it, open, all that fun stuff. Just like you can do with everything else. So with this selected, I can click. I can hold the shift key if I want, and it will make this a straight line. And it gives me two points, as it says. And then, after I make those two points, it gives me a third one to click, and there's my two-point perspective. It's very simple, very easy to use, that's all this is. You still have the option to move it around, delete it, and hide it. You might want to hide it if you're drawing and maybe it's in the way, as I'm making another one by accident. Um, but moving it is definitely helpful, and as you can see, no matter where I move it, it's kind of um, always going to be visible. It's infinite <laughs> is going off your screen your canvas all that fun stuff which is good it's not a bad thing and if you want to edit the points so let's say you want a little bit more dynamic two-point perspective you can click on any of these and move it around you can change the angle here with these controls so you can use this to rotate it it's pretty cool use this and then when you go back to draw snap to assistance I'm using the shift key as I hold this down. So let's say this is like a building I'm making. Um, good, we're gonna turn this off. Back to the brush. So you can see I made some pretty drastic, very extreme angles for this whatever I'm, I'm drawing. But that helps when you're making cities, um, very specific environments like a city. It doesn't have to be a city, it could be maybe a forest or something like that that you might need help getting that really good perspective on. All right, so another thing that shows up with the two-point perspective is enable vertical ruler. So obviously you have your horizontal lines. If you take this off when you go to draw, you're not gonna have the straight up and down line. You're only gonna have the um, diagonal lines here for the horizontal perspective. So if we go back to the assistant tool, we click on that and we enable the vertical ruler. When we go back to um, the brush, I can make the vertical lines again. It's pretty cool, I think. All right, so let's say you've made your two-point perspective grid and you want to change the color, so that way your other perspective grids or assistant tools that you've made don't overlap and you can tell which is which. So you can just go back to the global color and you can change the color here. We'll change it to a blue. And it can change the opacity as well. So for me personally, I think sometimes it's a little too bright and I, I either just like turn the guide off. Oops. Oh my god. <laughs> there we go. I either turn it off when I go to draw or I will try and change the opacity. And that kind of makes life a little easier for me. You can also change the density of it. So let's say you want to have a huge environment or whatever you're doing for the perspective you want a lot to be included um, in this environment that you're making but i'm just going to say city because that's often when the perspective is used the most uh, because it, it's very noticeable because it, a lot of city buildings are very straight <laughs> they're just rectangular blocks some have designs but you know you want this to be a really dense city now this also could be a far away shot um, where you're like looking let's say from like a hell or something down at the city, you'd want to have a higher dent or lower density number to make it look more dense. And then if you want more of a, let's say, 
bird's eye view type thing, maybe looking more from even more from above, this would be I mean, increasing density would actually help a lot with that as well. It could be farther away as well, like out in the distance. There's a lot of things you can do with the density changes. I'm just gonna right click on the number right here and then change it back to one. I'm gonna delete that. So now we're gonna look at the limit assistant area. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make the perspective grid like normal. But after that third click, you notice I can still click around. So let's say I wanna focus on this area. I click and drag, and now I have a specific area that I'm focusing on the perspective for. Now this is gonna be very helpful for comic panels. And honestly, I think that's the best <laughs> way to use it, is using it for comic panels, because then you can change the perspective in each panel without putting the entire perspective grid on the entire canvas. And this is really nice. So once you limit the area, you can go ahead, start drawing however you want, you know, all that great stuff. And you've got your limited perspective in that specific area. All right, and that's basically it for the two point perspective. It's nothing super complicated. It just makes life a little easier. If you are curious if this existed, something similar existed before, we did have the vanishing point, which gave you a horizon a horizon line and then you could have um, some lines to help with the vanishing point and then if you wanted to you could add a perspective and oh, I still have my limit area on. Oh that's interesting. Let me turn that off. Perspective. So if you had the perspective you could do combine that with the vanishing point but because they were separate, you would have to really make sure you weren't warping one or the other to get a poor perspective grid to reference from, or to utilize. So, we have the two-point perspective, which kind of combines the best of both worlds, makes life a little easier. You can do some great stuff with it. Alright, and that is it for this video. I hope you learned something. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer them. Or I'll make a video on them if it's worth making a video on. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.